Sandy. Hi, Princess Rosie. Hi, guys. I'm here with Sherm. Huh? That is a, not a hello. <gasps> and Provocative Tulip and Butterfly, who are still up for adoption, by the way. Uh, Tulip, $10,000. Butterfly is $5,000. And we have eight other ponies for $2,000 apiece. So if you are interested, get a hold of me at my email, missycrabtreeyahoo.com. All right. <laughs> We've got a good reading again today. We are going to read all of Acts chapter 26. If you hear beeping, it's just because I took the phone off the hook. I could cover it up with something. It's really loud and annoying. Can you take this, please? All right, guys. If you'd like to follow along, we'll be reading in the New International Version, Acts chapter 26, and then we'll have our Psalms, which I think, 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 today is Psalm 6. It's either 5 or 6. I think it's Psalm 6. And then our, let me just go check. Yes, Psalm 6, and our Proverbs will be Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. So in case you want to set your markers in your book, in your Bible, that's what we'll be reading today. And if you need time, just pause the video, and then you'll be ready when you get back. All right, so we're going to be talking Paul's still on trial, but he's not really on trial per se. He is um, before King Agrippa right now, talking to him and the prominent men of the city and with um, Festus there. And Paul's going to tell him about what happened and how he used to be and about seeing Jesus and how he changed his life. And Excuse me, guys. And... Um, Even King Agrippa says at the very end here today, you know, Paul should not be in prison. He should not be killed. He should be, he should have been let go a long time ago, pretty much. So, let's get into it here and you'll see what I mean. But it still leaves you on today thinking, so what's happened, what's going to happen to Paul? Will we find out tomorrow? I don't know, you have to come back and see. Maybe tomorrow, maybe not. So let's begin. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. The Jewish people all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child, from the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time and can testify, if they are willing, that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion living as a Pharisee, and you know he did. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I am on trial today. This is the promise our 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled, and they earnestly serve God day and night. King Agrippa, it is because of this hope that these Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it Incredible that God raises the dead. Which I don't understand that either because our God can do anything. Absolutely anything. So why is it that they can't believe that God can raise somebody from the dead? They've seen Jesus do it many times when he was here on the earth. It makes no sense. They've seen it themselves. 
I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, who you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by in me, who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day. So I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses would have happened. That the Messiah would suffer and as the first to rise from the dead would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it is not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today become what I am, except for these chains. The king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice, and those sitting with them, after they left the room, they began saying to one another, This man is doing nothing, anything, that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man should have been set free. He could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So the King Agrippa's telling him, Festus right there that Paul should have already been let go. There was no sense for him to even be in prison, which there was not a sense for him to be there. It's just people wanting to shut him up because they don't want to believe the truth. And you know about Jesus. But that's where we're going to stop with Acts for today. So you're like, oh, come on. What happens next? Do they still send him to Caesar? What's going to happen? What's Caesar going to say? Does Paul get killed? Does he get locked up? Does he get flogged? Do they let him go? 
maybe tomorrow, maybe not. Got to come back and see. Our psalm today is Psalm 6. For the director of music with stringed instruments, according to the Sheminith, a psalm of David. Another beautiful psalm of David. You know I love David's psalms the most of all. It's like David speaks right to my heart. I love, I just love the psalms of David. I just feel like sometimes the way David speaks to the Lord, it's like I'm saying the things David says to the Lord. He like says so many things, you know, like the way I would feel. He just seems so close to the Lord, you know, and he loves the Lord so much, and I love the Lord so much, and I'm not comparing myself to David by any means. He's a much better person than I'll ever be, but I'm just saying, I love the Lord so much, and David was a good man, and God said of David, he is a man after my own heart, so you know David was a good man, and I really look up to David. And I love his psalms. And I lo I just love, I just love with all my heart how David loved the Lord. That's what I love most of all, his love for the Lord. That's what I love about David. So we got 10 verses today in Psalm 6, so let's read it. Lord, do not revoke me in your anger. Or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fell because of my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. And that was Psalm 6. For the director of music with stringed instruments, according to the Sheminith, the Psalm of David. In our Proverbs is Proverbs chapter 18. Verses 20 and 21. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I'll read this again. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Let's get out our prayer books now. Sherman got me a new fluffy pen today. Used to have one of these when I was in high school. I thought they did away with these long ago. He got it at Goodwill, so 99 cents. <laughs> It's hard to tell how old it is. It still writes though. So it might be from back when I was in school. Because I, I haven't seen these in a long time. Fuzz on my fuzz ball. Alright, let's get started here with our prayers. Let's start from here. Let's keep Shannon and her son Giovanni in our prayers. Kathy Keller and Dave, and her husband Donald Keller. Donald was having chest pains last night and um, pain in his arm and hand. 
left arm and hand. So I don't know how he is now. I think he might have been born to the hospital, I hope. They are new to our list. And they are they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. So our brother and sister in Christ. So please keep them in prayer. Tammy Ashworth. Amber Brown. I'm not sure if she had her surgery yet or not. Abby and Jimmy Myers, Cindy Welsh, Rhonda Karshner, Sandy. Sandy's off work the next couple days. But please keep praying for her for her work environment to get better. But she's got the next two days off. Um, please keep praying for Eric for him to get a kidney. Remember, guys, please, please put Eric on the prayer list at your church. I know a lot of you guys will be going to church on Sunday, so please put Eric from New Jersey on your prayer list. I don't know what his last name is, but he's, he lives in New Jersey. His name is Eric, and he's 24 years old, so, and he needs a kidney really bad. He's been on dialysis for four years. Please keep him on, please put him on the prayer list, and please pray for Macy. She's 16 and got a brain tumor, we want to pray that God takes it away. Please pray for Kenny. He's my age and he needs a kidney. Please pray for Sherm. He's been having a headache for two days. It just won't stop. I've been giving him like Cedric migraine. That used to help him a lot, but it's not even touching it. I don't know what's going on. Please pray for Sherm. A miracle for Sherm to be able to get a car. Please pray for April and Linda Thacker. Please pray for Christopher Serbak. Roy and Lori Mollett. Barb Post, Joe Osborne for him to stay on the right track, Debbie Lee, and Josh Mollett and Medallia Mercer and their unborn baby, little Braxton Lee. All right, guys, now let's just get your homework out here. All right, your homework for last night was, in what town was Jesus born? What is the answer, Sherm? Bethlehem. The answer is Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a little stable because there was no room for him in the inn. Your homework for tonight is, what was the name of Ruth's husband? What was the name of Ruth's husband? Ruth's husband. The husband of Ruth. What was his name? Okay, guys, we'll just end in prayer and we'll be done. Brother Jesus and Father, please watch over everybody watching this video or listening to this video. Please be with them. Please bless their days. Please um, let them all have a wonderful weekend. Please let this video, please let your word have touched at least one of their hearts so that they will turn their life over to you or that they will get closer to you or that they will share this with some, your word with somebody else and they will turn their life to you or get closer to you in some way. And please watch over everybody on our prayer list, Brother Jesus and Father. And please let Abby and Chris have a good visit while they're together. And please let them have a good relationship. Please be with them in their relationship. We love you, Brother Jesus and Father, with all of my heart and soul. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, that was everything. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.